Hey, this is Mike from the Run Testers, and on my wrist right now, I have the Garmin 4Runner 265 and the 4Runner 965. So these are two of Garmin's biggest running watch launches this year. The big story here is that they are the first two 4Runner watches to have an AMOLED display. Now there's a bit more to it in terms of how these watches differ, and myself and Nick have both been wearing these watches. And what we wanna do in this video is give you a bit of an overview of the key differences between the two watches, and then we'll kind of get into our experiences of living with both of the watches, how they compare in terms of the kind of performance, in terms of the features, what's available. I think probably most importantly as well, the kind of battery life you're gonna get now that you have those AMOLED displays in place. So as I said, first of all, we're gonna get into the key differences and then myself and Nick will give you our experiences as what it's been like to live with the 4 and a 265 and the 4 and a 965. Okay, so before we get into our experiences of what it is like to wear these two watches and track our runs with these two watches, there's some key differences between the watches. And I think it kind of breaks down into a few things. I think you're looking at things like design, uh, the battery life, and also some of the running features that you will or won't get on these two watches. Now, I'll start with design. And I think the biggest thing on the design front, I think all kind of the things that I think I would pick out are the fact that Obviously with the 4 and 265, you are getting that in two size options. So the T65 and the 265S. With the 965, you're only getting it in one case size. Other little differences worth pointing out as well is that you're getting different materials in terms of the bezels. So on the 265 and 265S, you're getting a polymer bezel. On the 965, it's titanium. So you're getting something maybe a little bit more high grade in terms of that design. And that's kind of a key little difference in terms of that kind of hardware that you're going to be looking down when you're tracking your runs. Now, in terms of other things, really, you're not getting solar charging options on either of these watches, whereas with the 955, you did have that kind of option with the 965. Maybe they'll add that in the future, but at the moment, you don't have a version for the 965 uh, that offers solar power. Now, obviously, you have AMOLED screens here, and there are different sizes and resolutions. So you're obviously getting a bigger screen on the 965, and you're getting a higher resolution AMOLED display there as well. And you are getting a kind of smaller resolution and smaller screen on the 265S compared to the 265, which is a little bit closer in terms of resolution that you're getting on the 965. Now, obviously, they are touchscreen displays as well, and that's available across all of these watches. Another thing worth pointing out is that you're in, in the level of storage you're getting in terms of what you can play with. So things that you know, the storage you can kind of store music, um, kind of download apps, you know, and ultimately you're going to get a lot more on the 965 compared to what you get on the 265 and 265S. So if you, so if memory is something you care about. And ultimately, that's what you're going to get more of on the 965. But elsewhere, pretty similar in terms of the features. In terms of the straps, you're getting similar um, kind of looking straps. You're getting a different kind of mechanism in terms of how can you remove those straps. Same waterproof rating if you want to go swimming with it as well. So yeah, those are the kind of key design differences that we've kind of spotted, identified in terms of what you're getting on the 265 and 265S and the 965. Okay, so into those running features, and ultimately you're getting watches that are very close in terms of the level of features that you're getting here. So the types of uh, running profiles, I think the kind of training analysis you're getting here in terms of those features, things like training readiness and those morning reports, those are there as well. The improved race predictor, the improved interval modes, um, access to Garmin Coach, these are things that you can all get across these watches. And then we get to the key running differences and the main things are really centered around navigation support. So you do get breadcrumb and trail navigation across both these watches, but on the 965 you're getting preloaded uh, topo maps, the kind of trail and road maps, you're getting features like uh, the Garmin and Strava live segments, which you don't get on the 265 and 265S. Things like Around Me, uh, Climb Pro, Ascent Planning as well, those are for the 965 as well. So it very much is built around the kind of navigation support that you're getting on the 965 over the 265, which is the real main difference there. And it kind of explains why you're getting that extra level of storage as well to have that capacity to have those features. And that's really the key things that you're getting from the 965 over the 265 in terms of other features. But outside of that, they're pretty consistent in terms of the level of support and smarts that you're getting on the running front. 
And then finally, we get to battery life, which I think is a really important one, particularly because the big inclusion here is that AMOLED display. And the AMOLED display does impact on the level of battery life that you're gonna get on these watches. Now, we've kind of pulled out some key battery stats that kind of show you how these watches compare. I think the main ones to really kind of look at are what you're gonna get in terms of using the watch in kind of general smartwatch mode, you're gonna get more on the 965 compared to the other watches. Um, in terms of when that the screen or the AMOLED display is on at all times, you're getting a couple more days on paper on the 965 compared to the 265 as well. I think it's also interesting to show that if you go for the smaller 265S, over the 265, you are going to see some small kind of battery improvements just because it's a smaller case, smaller design, obviously less needs, less battery power to kind of power some of the similar features that you're getting on the 265. Also, multi-band mode or kind of multi-band GNS uh, mode, that is a feature we've seen on the other watches that support it does hit the battery life a little bit harder. So if you're using it in that kind of more intense, more accurate GPS mode on both of these watches or across the range, it is gonna show you a kind of more significant drop in battery life. The good news is they both have those kind of power manager modes that we start to see Garmin introduce. So those give you a bit more control in terms of, you know, how, what your features you're using and what is kind of draining the battery life and kind of pushing that battery life a little bit longer than you need to. It's not quite intensive as the power feature modes that you get on the kind of Phoenix and Epics range, but it, it's, it's good to see that you've got those across the two watches as well. If you want a bit more control uh, over that kind of level of battery life you enjoy. You're getting proprietary charging cables here, the same cable across the two watches. So if that's something you're, you're looking for, and we have seen a couple of other new Garmin's kind of move to kind of different charging setups. With these two watches, you're getting identical uh, cables that are in the box. So ultimately that's battery life bit more you're going to get on the 965 on paper if you go from the 265 and 265s you're getting a bit more battery life than the smaller 265s compared to 265 so yeah those are the key battery stats that you can expect from the 4965 and the 265 and 265s As well as testing the 4965 and 265 individually for full reviews, I've also been wearing both of them at the same time over the past uh, week, 10 days, just to compare things like battery life, GPS performance, uh, all that kind of thing. And a lot of similarities between the two watches, it's fair to say. Like, the 965 does have a slightly nice design, the bezel's a little bit nicer to wear, but it's a bit of a wash, you know, I use similar watch faces on both and they are both very nice looking watches to wear all the time, but you've got slightly nicer materials used on the 965. GPS accuracy had really been a wash. Now, I used both of these watches at the London Marathon at the weekend, and it really is very close between them throughout the entire race. You can see, actually, in all the runs I've done with them, that the tracks overlay each other most of the time. They both make very few errors in terms of cutting corners or you know swerving off the road into buildings, that kind of thing. Like, at the London Marathon, both had a nightmare around Canary Wharf. I couldn't say either of them was better than the other one. Both of them had problems there, and they logged similar distances overall. So. Don't think you need to look at upgrading to the more expensive watch for GPS accuracy. The multi-band accuracy on the 265 is just as good as anything on the more expensive watches, so no concerns there. Battery life is a clear upgrade on the 4965. You're gonna get, I've been getting actually seven days out of it, which I think is pretty good, because I've had the always on screen enabled the entire time, and I've been using multi-band the entire time, notifications going into the watch, that kind of thing. So on similar conditions with the Garmin Epics too, I was looking at four or five days, with the 4965, that's been uh, seven or eight days, and the 265 is a lot less than that. It's four or five days. You just have to charge it a little bit more often. Neither is disastrous battery life for an AMOLED screen, and you obviously can extend it by using different GPS modes or using the uh, wake, raise to wake function, which is pretty good on both watches. I prefer having the always on screen on myself just to get that little glance at the time without really having to turn your wrist too much. But yeah, the 965 is offering a fair bit more battery life. It's actually really very good battery life for an AMOLED display. If you want more than this, you are looking at the memory and pixel watches in Garmin's range and from other brands. So that's one upgrade of the 965. The other big one obviously is maps. Now, I use navigation semi-regularly on the watches, but actually a lot of it, I don't really need full maps. Like at the moment, I'm not living a very adventurous life and there's no call for me to have those maps. And the breadcrumb navigation on the 265 is fine. It's always gonna get you through uh, a run. You're not gonna go too wrong. You get the turn-by-turn -turn directions. You can see if you deviate course too much. The maps are brilliant on Garmin watches. They really do give you context to your routes, really make it very clear and help with things like climbs, because you get things like Climb Pro as well, that show you which turn to take in a hurry at a glance when you've got the context of the other stuff on the map there. But it's not an essential feature for me, and I'm sure it's not essential for lots of runners. That's the clearest deal breaker between these two watches though. So 
if the maps aren't something that leap out to you as absolutely essential, then it's a lot closer between them. You are looking more at things like the design and battery life, uh, because otherwise the 265 really is an outstanding watch. Like it, it really matches up well on training analysis, GPS performance, heart rate accuracy I haven't talked about because I, I still think neither of these watches is really quite good enough to justify not using an external chest strap if you're going to use things like training readiness on the watches. My rule of thumb, especially with Garmin watches, is that the smaller, the lighter the watch, the better the heart rate accuracy because it sits more firmly and closely against the wrist. But in general, I would still be preferring a chest strap to the 265. It's been pretty good for me when I haven't used a chest strap, but you will get the odd run that's completely out of whack and that does throw off your training analysis. So I think neither of these is good enough that you wouldn't want to wear a pair of an external strap if you're going to use that heart rate analysis. If you're not really using the training analysis and you just occasionally check your heart rate during runs, both are kind of okay. Maybe the 265 is slightly better, but Really, it's a bit of a wash there. I'd be pairing an external strap. And then across the board, the other stuff, the readiness, heart rate variability, you know, predicted race times, all that stuff is a wash between the two watches. So the differences between them are quite few. They are significant in terms of the design being better, the battery life being better, and those maps being amazing and obviously essential to some runners who really will want to use them all the time. But if you're not really looking at those things as a big deal, then the 265 is a brilliant watch and just as good in every other regard. I really liked wearing it all the time. The fact it's a little bit smaller is quite nice as well. And it's not an unpleasant design. I was very happy to wear it the whole time. So yeah, I probably would get the 265 because the maps aren't that key to me. I don't mind charging every four to five days. Those are the key difference points for me. And you'll know if that makes you want to spend the extra on the 965. So which of these four runner watches should you buy? Which one would I buy personally? Well, I'll say first and foremost that I have enjoyed using both of these watches. It has definitely thrown a bit of a curveball in terms of the watch that I would want to use long term for my run tracking. I normally use the Garmin Epics and I think the 965 and the 265 with the addition of our AMOLED display really kind of does elevate, you know, using those watches and using them in general as a smartwatch too. Now, I do think it's a bit of a situation where we had with the 255 and the 955 where I think there's some clear differences between the performance that may make you or you know sway you to go for one watch over the other i think the key areas for me in terms of my experience have been around the gps performance heart rate monitoring battery life whereas elsewhere they've been very very similar in terms of performance the training analysis as i said has been very um, consistent in terms of what i've seen across the two watches now in terms of gps performance i would say that the multi-band the kind of top multi-band gps mode on the 965 has performed a little bit better than it has on the 265. I think general the tracks have been pretty good but I think in terms of the accuracy or getting close to that kind of you know more supreme accuracy I think the 965 a little bit like the 950, 955 has performed a little bit better in comparison to that other forerunner watch. Now I would say in terms of heart rate monitoring performance and if you rely on that kind of risk-based heart rate monitoring um, kind of sensor then I would say for me the 265 has performed a little bit better particularly on the kind of more high intensity kind of um, runs that I've done in it. Um, I think for kind of steady runs in general, they've been very, very similar. But I think maybe in terms of that kind of smaller case size, that kind of slightly better fit on the 265S that I've had, has delivered more accurate data in general. But ultimately, I would be using an external heart rate monitor for both of these watches. Now, the other area I think for me really, and the, the most important area for me really I wanted to see from these watches, because of that AMOLED display, was the battery life now in terms of you know how how much you can use these watches in between charges i would say it's going to be roughly a week for both of them that's reliant on you probably using a mix of always on display and you know disabling the always on display some kind of regular use of the multi-band gps mode that kind of top end mode and things like continuous hr kind of monitoring I think notifications, what I kind of use my watch for as well, uh, and maybe kind of the music playback uh, control features as well. Now, for me personally, I have seen, it's been good and bad, or I think it's a mixed bag in terms of what I've seen with the performance of these two watches. I think in terms of the 265 and the 965 and some runs, they've been pretty level pegged in terms of the battery drop off when you're using that kind of multi-band mode. Now, if you're using that multi-band mode and you're using kind of the mapping and navigation features that are, uh, available to these watches obviously you've got that fuller color mapping on the 965 you don't have that on the 265 you just get that breadcrumb navigation i've seen a more severe drop off with the kind of fuller mapping on the 965 and using that multi-band mode i think on one run it was 20 percent in compare compared to i can think less than 10 percent on the 265s so that's kind of what i would expect to see you're using more features they're using a more intensive feature there in terms of that mapping against the kind of breadcrumb navigation on the 265s so i think personally for me 
Well, I would say the 965 is probably the better watch. It's kind of what you expect. It is a more expensive watch. You expect a kind of an upgrade in terms of performance. And I think from a GPS uh, kind of performance, I think from a battery performance, I think you're getting a little bit more, even though it's a bigger, a bigger watch as well. I think it's holding that battery a little bit better um, if you're not kind of using any more, more intensive features on the 965. On the 265, I think in general, the analysis uh, that I'm getting from here is very similar to what I've seen on the 965. I think GPS pump has been very good, if not you know, quite there with the 965 in that kind of top multi-band mode. And I think the battery life, the heart rate monitoring performance has been very good as well. So I think for me, the experience on both of these watches has been very, very strong. But I think if I look at which has offered me the best experience or the most accurate experience, I would say the 965 just about edges it. But for me personally, I think the 265 would be enough watch for me. I think the 265S is probably a little bit smaller. That's, that's the one I had to test. I would probably go a little bit bigger in terms of that 265 case size. And I think GPS performance has been good enough. But if you care about that optimum kind of GPS performance, getting a little bit more battery when you're you know using that always on display and when you're not using that always on display, and then I think you're gonna get the 965 as well. And I think those would be the key reasons for me to go for the 965. It is more expensive. I do think the 265S uh, is a very good watch as well, but I think if you're looking for the best out of the two, I think the 965 just about edges it. Okay, so there you have it. That is our take on how the 4265 compares to the 965. Hopefully you found the video useful and it's helped you decide which one maybe works best for you. If you have got any questions, as always, let us know in the comments. As always, like and subscribe, hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos and yeah, We'll see you in the next run test video.